How you doing? In this video, I'm just going to make a quick and easy button, and I'm going to show you how to make it look like it almost has like a little bit of an animated effect using one image and a little bit of CSS code. So, as you see on my screen here, I already made a button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two images in, into one, and then only show the first half. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Select, and then All. And then edit and copy. That's just going to copy what I have there. And then I'm going to go select, deselect. Then we're going to image and image size. Or, sorry, image and canvas size. And what I want to do is I want to make this button twice as wide as it is. So I'm going to change this to percent and make it 200%. And I want this part of the button to stay to the left hand side of the image. So I'm going to click the button here to make it stay for when I, it resizes, the button pushes over. So now I have the first part of the button here, and this is where I'm going to make my second part. So I'm, I'm going to paste what I already copied, and I'm going to lock that in so that it's directly across from the first part. So right now, I have pretty much the exact same button side by side. So on this one, I want to make some changes to it so that when if we do the code later and this slides over, I want this to be different. So uh, what, I, what I'm going to do is just um, make it look like it pushes in. So I'm going to use the elliptical tool to select the circle here. Okay, and then I'm going to take that and I'm going to drag it down a little. Almost to make it look like it pushes in some. And here I'm just going to erase out the excess there that I didn't get with the selection tool. I can just use the white since the, the color there is white. Oop. Okay, so now you can see I have the button and it's pushed in a little bit. So I'm going to save that image. You can save it as JPEG or PNG or whatever. I'm just going to do a JPEG in this instance. Okay, so you can close your... Well, actually, I'm going to keep that open because there's one other step that you're going to have to do here. Okay. So now I have my button here with the uh, pushed up and pushed in. And I already created these files here just to speed things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my CSS file. And this is the code you're going to use. I'm going to put this in the description of the video just for you can copy and paste and reuse it. I'm going to rename this just to the name of the button. In this case, I used mod dish, so I'm going to make that mod dish. And the name of the button here was mod dish. And here too. Okay, so this width and height is very important. The width, you want to make half the button size. So what you're going to do is in Photoshop, you're going to go to image then image size. And you're going to figure out what the width and height is. So in this case it's 300 by 153. So I'm going to divide the 300 by 2 and make it 150 by 153. So width is going to be 150 and height is going to be 153. It's going to be different for every button you do or any image you do that for that matter that you want to do a slide effect on and you want the background to slide 150 pixels for it shows the other half of the button. The same as the width here, so when you divide it by two you put half here and half here. I'm going to save that. And now I can close Photoshop. So now you want to edit your index file, or whatever file you happen to be putting it on. See, I got the style sheet included, and this is the code here that you need to 
just divide class and then whatever you named it. In this case I named it mod dish. And where you want it to point to, I'm just gonna have it point back to the index file. And if you want to put text on it, you would put it in here. But in this case I don't want to put any text. So I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna open it up and let you take a peek. So when somebody mouses over now the button slides and it's animated. And if they click it, it'll take them back to the index page in this case. And I'll show you a couple of instances where I use this. So here's a picture I use it on. You'll see up here that the, the mouse takes a bite of the cheese, screen printing, he pops out, embroidery. And this the light shuts off and the phone changes colors. Here's another example here where the, the eagle flaps his wings and the buttons all change. But the reason you do this is to prevent um it's hard to explain. You when you see an index file and the buttons all load, sometimes you'll see that you take your mouse and you put it over a button and the the button has a little bit of a delay so that the picture goes white before it actually shows the second half. So by having the image combined into one, when the browser loads it, it loads both images at once because it's only one image. So then the image slides across. If you want to see any other tutorials, i got a couple other ones on my website. It's moddish.com and you can go to tutorials and resources. i got um, one here to how to convert something into chocolate. There's another for doing some line art, trying, taking a picture and converting it into line art on the computer and with Photoshop and coloring it. And I'll be doing some more video videos in the future. Hope you enjoyed it and have a great day.